So the other day, I was talking with a good friend of mine that is also an experienced developer. And um, he was asking me about, you know, advice and knowledge of all the things that I've gathered so far. And I realized in that moment that it's been two, three years now that I've been in this uh, journey from like starting the company to then actually hiring people and now developing the game. And there's been so much knowledge that I've gathered over the, over the years. And I think that it's time for me to share some of that knowledge for all my experienced developers out there that perhaps are thinking about starting their own journey into this like new studio, new team, how hard it is, how difficult it is to actually get started, and some of the trials and tribulations that we've been through. Because at Proxima, we've been through a lot. Um, there's been a lot of ups, a lot of downs, some of them public, some of them not, but it's been a learning experience. So. This video is dedicated for all those that have lots of experience in the games industry and are perhaps thinking about starting their own studio. So let's get to it. Welcome to another video. I hope you're all doing well and thanks for being here again. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing and dropping a comment when you finish watching the video and if you find it super interesting, also fulfilling, and is beneficial to you in any way, shape, or form. After all, only a small percentage of people that watch these videos are actually subscribed to this channel. So if you can actually subscribe and give it a like, so the algorithm actually like us a little bit more, will be highly appreciated because I try to actually drop knowledge here every single week or as much as possible. So hopefully it like inspires and gives ideas to people out there like you right now. So. Without further ado, let's get into this episode and let's talk about building your own business. And if this is more than a game studio, perhaps for all those out there that are thinking about it, maybe you're thinking about leaving the industry, maybe you're thinking about starting your own thing. One thing is certain, the more I speak with experienced developers like myself that have been in the industry for like 10, 20 years or plus, the more there's this feeling of being uncomfortable with how the industry is right now. And I understand completely how that is, at least for me, because you go from starting in the games industry, being super excited about the games industry, because it's the thing that you love the most, you played games for so many years, and you kind of thought about this moment for so long. And now your dream is here, you're finally working, building a game, publishing a game, and that first game that gets published, especially if it's a successful one, is so fulfilling because reading the comments and seeing the people out there reacting to the work that you and the team have done is like nothing else. And it, you actually kind of like are hyped about it all. And then you want to do it again and again and again, and you keep on doing it for many, many years, and it feels incredibly satisfying for many years. The problem is that as you actually build your career, as you actually kind of like transition from a junior animator like I was, to a mid-level, to a senior animator, to then become a lead, to then become a director, the more you realize that you go to different studios and you kind of find the same problems. There's a lot of politics, there's a lot of back and forth, uh, a lot of the studios, especially the bigger studios, you feel like a small piece of a big puzzle and there's not a lot that you can do. And even if you can do a lot, like a director, sometimes you can do more than others, but still you have a small box that you can kind of like operate in. So, as you go through those motions, the more you start thinking, wouldn't it be nice for me to actually work on a smaller studio that I could have creative freedom and that I could do things much more how I've thought of doing it all these years, but I never quite managed to do it. And this is when you start thinking about building your own business, your own studio perhaps, or gathering with a bunch of other developers and starting your own studio. So I think there's a lot of people out there thinking about this nowadays. And the reason why is because the games industry is in a state where before, if you work for a Sony or an Activision or Microsoft or a Ubisoft, you would be 100% safe and there'll be no problem and you can supposedly, <laughs> or at least we thought back in the day, you could re just retire, right? And just be safe. There's no problem, you're a full-time employee, it's all good. I remember uh, working on a studio called Lionhead that unfortunately is no longer with us, the studio, and the studio used to actually belong to Microsoft. And I remember perfectly when I started, I was a contractor for Microsoft working for that studio, and there was some 
employees that were full-time. Then there was another section of us contractors that wanted to actually be employed full-time by Microsoft. And the reason why we wanted to be employed full-time was obviously for us to feel safe, for us to feel like now we can just spend the rest of our lives working for the studio and nothing bad will happen to us. But as we can see nowadays in the industry, nothing is further from the truth. No matter what studio you belong to or you work for, your job is not really safe because Microsoft, Sony, everybody is laying off people, closing studios, and things are a bit in a disarray state. And um, because of that, I think it emboldens people to kind of like take risks, which is a good thing in my view. And this is why that idea, those thoughts that you had for many years that you wanted to maybe plunge and you couldn't do it because either family or, you know, situations or stability. Now you're perhaps considering facing those challenges, right? Challenges that perhaps you couldn't do before. So I was certainly in that position. Uh, thankfully, I started just before things started going south in the industry. But my, my thought process was exactly that. What if I start something of my own instead of just waiting for somebody to get, give it to me? Start something of my own and then gather a bunch of people and then make something of my own. Now, when I started, I was so scared. And most likely all of you thinking about doing this are incredibly scared. And I'm here to tell you two years down the line or three years down the line has been, depends if you count on building the studio and building the team or if you count just development time. But all this time that I've been doing this, I can tell you right now that even though it feels incredibly scary, once you get going and you get the right people around you, it becomes so much easier. And the last bit, getting people around you that are incredibly talented and can support you is the most important thing. Because if you don't get a team, that actually not only believes in you and believes in the project, but also are there to kind of like, I don't know, call when you are not making the best decisions or call when perhaps you are aiming left, but you should be going right. Um, if you don't have a team that you trust, um, then I think that things fall through, fall through very quickly. Plus, the only way that you can hire people that are experienced like myself to work on projects that you want to actually work on it needs to be for the reason, not because of the money, but because they believe not only in you, but also in the project. And that is super underrated at this point because games involve money and everybody wants their publishing money or investor money. And as soon as you have money, then you go and hire the people that you want. And in reality, the way I think about it at least, is very much that if you hire the people that you want first, even before the money comes in and they are working for the project with you, for the passion when the money comes in, then it's way easier, right? Because we're all doing it because we love it. Well, now that we have money, now we just have to do more of this and get paid for it at the same time. Now, I cannot be here talking about only positives when owning a studio is for 90% of the time, it feels like pain. <laughs> and and it's, it's hard, it's incredibly hard, especially nowadays. So, for example, for us, uh, we have a really good game Publishers have told us many times how wonderful the art style, how wonderful the game is, the gameplay, all these other things. Investors have told us the same thing. Yet, we are still looking for that, 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 that investment, right? And we are looking for it because we want to get the right partner, but also at the same time, you can tell it's difficult. Nobody nowadays can tell you that getting funding is easy. It's really hard, no matter how talented the team is, how experienced it is, how good the product is, it's hard. Everybody's kind of like close to their wallets and they don't want to give away the money. So it's hard. You have to, specifically for me, I have to think about the game as a game director, but I also have to think about the company as a company owner. And to me, splitting the head in that way, especially the business side of things, because it's brand new to me, um, in games, um, having to be a CEO of a company, of a game company, and then going to events like GDC and Gamescom and talking a lot and walking a lot and setting up meetings and looking for the meetings and talking to certain people and trying to sell the game. Um, it's hard and you have to kind of sell it every single time as excited as you were the first time, which is another thing that I'm not used to. So there's lots of learning from it. But what I take from it is that because of this being new, because of being this world that I don't know, I'm used to the artistic world, I'm not used to the business world. Um, to me, I embrace it because I know it's painful and it's gonna be painful for a few more years, if not for the longest time. 
but I am learning and I'm learning a new skill that I didn't have before. And this is really good because I was used to animation and the world of animation. And I think even myself, as much as I want to actually kind of like keep learning and keep like delivering new content and making sure that the animations are as good as possible in any game, it gets to a point that you kind of want something new, something else that actually distracts your brain that you can learn that you're basically like a baby. You know nothing, you have to start from nothing, and then you slowly have to make mistakes in order to get there. So the saying or the motto of failing fast is 100% true here. So in the business side of things, me going to these events, meeting with a bunch of people, uh, updating my presentation all the time, making sure that I present again, making sure I get feedback. Everybody has feedback. So you have to kind of like take it all in and try to kind of like continuously improve. And it needs to be relentless. It needs to be like when you just go, I just had enough, how many more meetings can I have? You need to be like, well, let's keep going, right? And that's the attitude that you need to have. So it's hard, it's incredibly hard. And as someone said to me right at the beginning, if this was easy, everybody would do it. That saying, the longer it goes, the more true it becomes. <laughs> it's really hard. It's incredibly hard. And you have to have self-belief, not only in yourself, but in your team and the product in order for you to really um, continue pursuing this dream of making this game, right? And the funny thing is that just like most things in life, the first one is the, mo the hardest one. And then if you have a successful one, then the ones after that become much easier. The way I see it when I speak with other CEOs and founders and stuff, they kind of go like, after you publish the first one, as long as you actually have a game out there that is sold a bunch and you kind of like have it sorted and you have proof that you've done these things, then all of a sudden they know this team together collectively made this thing and therefore they can do other things after this. It's only the first time that you do it that is hard and this is what we're trying to kind of get over, right? The bump. But, you know, things get easier as you go through and just like everything in life, I do think, I do believe that keeping an eye on the future and thinking, okay, two games from now, we're going to be so good. It's going to be years to get there, but we're going to be great. We just have to go through the hump of the first one. And then we can look back and think about how hard it was and laugh about it and have some beers. But until then, we need to actually be here in the trenches trying to make the best that we can out of the situation. Also, it's ideas kind of start popping up within the studio as you are building the game. One of the things that we've been doing lately is the uh, podcast we have like um, for the players podcast um, that is uh, hosted by Proxima and is on our Proxima YouTube channel, still a small channel, still small views, but we are having a blast doing. So shout out to Kay Murdoch, shout out to Kyle. He is my co-host that we actually host these things together. Every week we meet up on a Thursday, record the podcast, talk about games, talk about the history of games, talk about what we're doing right now at Proxima, talk with amazing guests. Um, just last week, we actually hosted um, Sylvain, which is our narrative director, amazing story. He has done so many things. So these are the kind of things that kind of like the synergy that happens when you kind of like tag along a bunch of people that love games. All of a sudden, not only are you building a game, but you're talking about games and you're also kind of discussing the situation in the industry and things. And it just allows for you to kind of like relieve some of that stress, uh, not leaving things bottled up, if you, if you will. So for anybody out there that is looking to actually develop their own studio, their own business, now that you actually experience AAA developer, no matter what it is, there's a few ideas that you have. Like you can build a whole game studio like I did. Great, that is definitely the hardest path, but is amazing. We need more people out there like you guys doing more of that so we can kind of like, you know, come together and basically build a more amazing games. So that's one. But there's a bunch of other things that you can do when it comes to your own business. You can actually sell your individual services like a consultant like I do to pay the bills. So I consult with a few, a few different companies right now and I share my knowledge with them so they can actually kind of like have better animations and a better team and mocap and things like that. So sharing my knowledge that I gather over the years with them, that's basically uh, a business as well. There is also you actually being an outsourcing company, meaning that you can gather you yourself and other artists, animators, coders, and build your own company and then sell the services of that company to different uh, companies. So basically they go, okay, we don't have any, an animation team. Here's all the animation that we need for our game. 
can you take care of all of that? And then you do the rigging and the modeling sometimes uh, and the animation most importantly, and then you send it back to the company, they'll, they'll implement it, Bob's your uncle. So there's lots of different businesses that you can do around the animation uh, or art or development. So it doesn't have to be building a whole studio like I just mentioned in the beginning, because that's the hardest path. But there's many things that you can do as long as you're happy, as long as you feel like you have a sense of like, discovery again that you feel like you're actually growing you feel like slightly unease like you you did right at the beginning when you started if you think about the old days um that's basically how you grow as a person and and the more you do that the happier you are and for sure the reason why i keep doing um, these videos for you guys the reason why i keep like super happy and positive is mostly because i'm doing these things on the side right these things that uh, slightly different from the usual. I think if I was doing the same thing over and over again, I'll probably tear my hair out because I wouldn't be able to actually stand. I like, you know, I just get bored, right? And uh, I have a feeling that a lot of you feel the same way. So if you do, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed these tips. And as I mentioned before, if this is useful to all of you, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And until next time, stay safe, stay well. Peace.